Julia. It's just me again. Well, that's another one of my uh, pointless rambly end of day videos. I know it's been a little while since my last one. Uh, I tend not to really follow any kind of a schedule when I'm on my days off. Which is where I was the last four days. So, yeah, on those days I don't really have a whole lot going on. I just kind of go till I drop, sleep for a couple hours, and keep going again. Um, but this time I have a little something different. Uh, that is, I have a little bit of a story time from over the weekend. And, uh, yeah, I, it was, uh, it was definitely a mixed bag. So, like I mentioned previously, I have, uh, I, yeah, I have a friend who lives up, up in the North Woods, and I went to go visit him with a couple other friends, and we all, we all met up there for, uh, a smallish birthday celebration to you know because he just had his birthday last week. So I get up there, it's you know, a little before noon. Spend the afternoon up there. Uh play some card games, including a, a rousing game of cards against humanity. I've really gotta get a set of that game for myself at some point because I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so anyway, afternoon turns to evening, evening turns to night, night turns to late night. And finally I decide that it's time for me to go. I'm having to get back here and uh, get myself ready for my next day of work on, uh, on, on Sunday evening. So I'm driving back. It's a bit a, about a two hour drive from uh, from his place back to my place. I'm about uh, about a half an hour away from home. You know, this is a little before one a.m. You know, so late night, not a lot of traffic on the highways. Seems pretty deserted. And. All of a sudden, I see this white vehicle off in the distance with its four-way flashers going. And, okay, so it's off on the right shoulder. So, as any person you know, with, uh, with, you know, with common decency would do, you know, I moved over to the left lane, gave them plenty of space. But... I'm still watching the right lane and the right shoulder for signs of, of anything being amiss. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I did my headlights down from high beam to low beam, so, I, you know, it's a courtesy thing. Still keeping an eye on the right lane, the right shoulder, because I, I don't know what's going on with that vehicle. I just... I was chalking it up to a you know, mechanical issue or maybe, maybe a flat tire. And my eyes go back to the left lane just in time to see it. There's this big black bump in the road in my lane, in, in the middle of, of the left lane. I don't have time to, to react, to, uh, to stop or swerve, and I hit this this lump at 65 miles an hour. You know, it was with enough force that the car actually did briefly go airborne. Much, uh, much to my shock. Not sure how close I really was to losing control, but the car was fishtailing a little bit after it landed. And I pulled over and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, with, with as hard as I hit that, with 
there is no way that, that my front end survived. Or that I must have punctured the tire or, you know, broken a strut. You know, something, something horrible had to have happened. And I, you know, I'm, I think I'm understandably in shock over this whole thing. I pull over to the, the right shoulder, hit the four-way flashers, get out of the car, and I take the quick look at the, at the front end, and miraculously I don't see anything amiss with it. So I... I I then turned my attention to the you know, to the vehicle behind me that was already there when, when I approached and hit whatever that thing was. And as I'm about two-thirds of the way back to that vehicle, it starts to pull up toward me. Passenger has his window rolled down, asks me if I'm okay, and I, you know, I'm like, I'm honest with the guy, I'm like, I'm, yeah, physically I'm fine, but I am seriously shaken up by, by this. And that's when he tells me that what we hit, yes, what we, what we hit was a bear. Not a full grown bear, uh, thankfully, but it was, it, I, I confirmed it after they left. That yes, it was actually a fuck a fucking black bear. You know, it was uh, it was a couple of years old. You know, it was, uh, I, I'm I'm guessing here. I, I don't don't really know how quickly bears grow. I've never really looked into it, but it was uh, a bit. A bit bigger than a large dog would be. Sturdier build, of course. Uh, after after the, the people in the other vehicle left, you know, they, they pulled away. I didn't really catch what they were saying. And I grabbed my phone, went back with the flashlight of, uh, from the phone. Was able to confirm that he has sit was a black bear, which they had since pulled off onto the shoulder of the road. But yeah, I was, uh, I meandered my way back to the car after that, sat, sat in it after taking another look at the, the exterior of the car. I mean, it, it's, it's pitch black outside, so I can't really see anything other than well, the headlights are illuminating. So, I don't see anything wrong with the car. So I decided, you know, I, I take my chances because there's really nothing I can do at that point. And I start the car back up and I, start, I begin to pull away. And miracle of miracles, the car is still drivable. I, Take it the half, you know, the half hour drive to, to get back home. Park it in the garage. And uh, yeah, that, it's at that point that I'm finally in a place that has lights. So I turn, you know, I hit the garage light. Look underneath. I'm just poking around, looking around, looking around. And I can't find any obvious damage. So just... Based on this, I'm saying that that car was, was built to be a fucking tank in its spare time. I mean, for those interested, it, it, it's a uh, it's a Mercury Milan, you know. And I mean, I, I'm just shocked as hell that the body, as far as I can tell, has sustained no damage. Despite making con d d despite uh, hitting that bear at sixty five miles an hour, I mean, at, at those speeds, I was expecting the car to just be completely obliterated. You know, that that front end should have had nothing left, you know. 
but I get the car home, everything seems okay. I mean, there does seem to be a slight wobble to the uh, passenger side front wheel now, so I think it needs an alignment, but other than that, it seemed to drive okay. Uh, I mean, and you know, I I get home and I I am realizing that just how shaken up I was. I had a hard time pushing it out of my mind. I did go ahead and contact my insurance agent, waiting to hear back from him at this point. I made a, a an appointment with my mechanic for later this week to get the car looked over and make sure that there's no uh, hidden damage as far as they can tell. So I might be okay, but actually no. I know the car did not escape unscathed. As uh, I was scraping off the, the windows this morning thanks to a uh, a freezing rain system we got coming through the area. Get out of the car and I realized that yeah, it's it's louder now than it was before. So clearly something has been damaged in the exhaust system. Much 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 to my dismay. But I mean if, if that's the worst that I get out of it, then great. So, here's hoping that on Thursday when I bring the car in, that I won't find anything more. But I'm still nervous about it. I still have to uh, drive, drive the car back and forth to work two more times. Make a drive to another city for my electrolysis appointment on Wednesday. So, I'm just hoping that the car can hold out that long. I don't discover anything else wrong with it. But, uh, yeah. At, at, at this point in time, I just I don't know how much more... how much more can be done. But, yeah, that's... That's my tale from the weekend. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthink, oh, um, overthinking it. But I'm still kind of scared that something else is gone is gonna go wrong. Like I'll drop a tailpipe or something. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that that's that's where I'm at in in that regard. Um, yeah, uh, moving on, um, just so that's, this isn't just a, a one-topic thing. Uh, I like my shirt. Lesby-ish. It's a little joke from the Rain webcomic. Anyone that's been uh, keeping up with me over the last uh, six months or so knows that I'm a little bit obsessed with Rain. It was a, a, a comic series that I discovered late, but I found the characters and most of the, of the story to be very relatable. So I kind of went all in on collecting the books, collecting some of the miscellaneous merchandise, a little bit of the, the apparel, you may have noticed in my first video that I had a, a shirt that said Always Rain. Yeah. So That one was a, a bit of a disappointment. I ordered the shirt, got it, but they messed up the graphic. The graphic is actually blurry. Like, they put the graphic on there twice, but it was offset by a few millimeters so it appears blurry because of that it, it, it just doesn't really work for uh, you know, 
or if you're gonna wear it out and about. So that's why I wound up using that one as a, uh, a nighttime shirt, a sleep shirt, if you will. This one I just got. You know, I just wore it to work all, all of last night. And, yeah, I find it comfortable. So I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, don't mean to cough on camera. That's, that's not what you want to see. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still not great right now. I'm still... So I'm still trying to uh, get back to normal as far as uh, the being shaken up from the other night. You know, I I don't know if it's normal or if I'm just um, over over analyzing, overthinking everything. But I'm having a little trouble getting back to where I should be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I'm more tired than I realized. But I guess that's why I call this my, uh, my, my bedtime thoughts. Because I finish here and I just go straight to bed after this. I kind of don't want to talk about this, but at the same time, I, f I feel like I need to. Um, so this morning I got word of uh, a new law, you know, new new bill has been passed into in the law in Tennessee, where they had decided to ban all gender-affirming care for anyone under the age of 18 in Tennessee with the added insult to injury is uh, a hard deadline early next year for everyone who has started to transition now has to detransition as of no later than, I think they said, Mar March 31st of next year. And I, you know, I'm, I'm pissed that this kind of thing has become the norm within the U.S. And it shows no signs of slowing down. I mean, here, here we have all these, you know, these feeble old men, these feeble fossils that are legislating what parents and their children decide with the, you know, under the advisement and the care of their fucking doctors. You know, the, the decision to transition is not one that's ever taken lightly. I mean, if it's just a flash in the pan thought by the child, by the minor, you know, by the, you know, you got the, you know, you know, say you got the 16 year old that decides that, you know, they, they decide that they need, they need to transition. And, you know, they, they always just go out and do this on the whim. It takes, you know, a psychiatric eva evaluation. You have to be seen by a doctor. You have to get blood work done. You have to make sure you pass all these barriers to entry. And then the doctors are going to monitor your health, your mental state, how you're handling things socially. You know, for you know, for years on end from that point forward, just to make sure that the person transitioning is, in fact, you know, making the right call. 
Now, I, I don't understand why they see that as, as such a, a bad thing. You know, you're, you're doing this un, under the care of several doctors and, and uh, you know, transgender-related uh, specialists. And, you know, if, every time I, I read another article about about these bans, about these restrictions being placed, not only on the on the kids, but I'm seeing all this shit about adults being um, being um, roped into this this thing too. Where you know what was it? Uh, was it Oklahoma? I think it was. That's uh, going to be pushing to ban all all gender affirming care for anyone under under the age of of 25 you know 25 years of age and under okay so you're gonna f start fucking telling adults that they cannot make decisions regarding their own bodies i mean not surprising given what they do with abortion but that's another rant i could go on to um but i don't know I, i'm just i'm just looking at this from the perspective from the perspective of do we trust doctors or don't we? You know, we trusted doctors for years to make the right medical decisions about about everything really to the, our our family's health care. But suddenly on this issue, it's a problem? I'm sorry, I just, I don't get it. And I... Okay, I get some of it. You know, I understand the, the misinformation out there, which is fucking abundant. You know, all this talk about child mutilation, you know, sex change operations on 13-year-olds, and blah, blah, fucking blah. But the fact of the matter is, they don't do the these surgeries on anyone under the age of 18 except in extremely rare cases. I mean, top surgery is done sometimes, but even that's quite rare. Bottom surgery, forget about it. I mean, that that is almost never done on anyone below the age of 18. And that's only after they you know, they complete years of transition, of, uh, of transitioning, you know, socially, medically, and, you know, I've, you know, I, I've been doing this myself for about a year and a half, not quite two years, um, it'll be two years in the summer, but, you know, the fact, you know, the fact of the matter is, the healthcare system that I go through, you know, which is, you know, it's, I won't name names, but it is a world-renowned healthcare system, and their standard is, you have to be doing this full-time for a full year before they'll even consider top surgery, and that's under the care of the social worker, psychiatrist, you know, the, the endocrinologist who's closely monitoring everything. You know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're not just turned loose after the, the first blood test. And they don't just write scripts willy-nilly. And then to even be, begin to be dis, um, considered for bottom surgery, which is a so-called uh, mutilation, you know, that takes uh, a bare minimum of two years before they'll even consider it. You know, so the, the, you know, there's a standard of care there that the opponents of gender affirming care, well, you know, they like to uh, you know, like to paint this false narrative about everything. When the fact of the matter is, there is standard of care. There are safeguards in place. You know, they, they do monitor the, the, the patient's 
psychological well-being. So why is it so hard to trust a doctor who has gone through years of, of medical training, sworn the Hippocratic Oath, but yet you'll choose to believe these these politicians who, you know, in, in all honesty, they've probably never even had a conversation with the trans person knowing that they were trans. So, you know, so, so you'll just believe the schmuck that's, you know, they're fucking, you know, they're just, they're fucking around on, uh, you know, in their capital building office, whatever, thinking that they know what's best for kids when, let's be honest, they, they don't have the slightest fucking clue they're, what they're talking about. So, I don't know, I, I'm, I don't have specifics in front of me to, to reference, but I look at everything going on and it breaks my heart, it crushes my soul to see that there are so many hateful, spiteful people out there that keep throwing out words like, like child mutilation, groomers, you know, all, all this derogatory bullshit that has no basis in fact. And, I mean, what, what, what the hell do you want? I mean, I, I, no, scratch that. I, I know what they want. They want us to not exist. Plain and simple. We're different. We're scary. They can't tolerate that. And, you know, what, what, what God damn it. Man, one of my favorite things to to look at and, and bash my head against the wall over is they keep bringing up this point about how there's been an explosion of transgender people over the last few years. No, no, no. A fucking thousand times no. While the numbers may appear to be that way. The fact of the matter is, there always have been transgender people in roughly the same percentages as there are now. The difference is, back then, back in the so-called good old days where everyone was normal, fuck you. Back then, anyone who thought they might be different, might be tr transgender, might be gay, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, any, any one of the labels under, under the rainbow is, you know, back then, if you came out, you know, you, you, you had a target on your back. And how many kids, how many adults were fucking terrified you know, of being targeted, you know, not just for verbal insults, but for, you know, having their homes vandalized, you know, being, you know, being harassed, whether it be in person, online, you know, or, you know, physically assaulted, you know, attacked, murdered outright, you know, just because of who and what they were. I mean, and and that and then you add in the uh, the the social aspect with with friends and family. I mean, twenty years ago, this shit was not was not accepted by most, and that's why so many people you know, kept it to themselves and suffered in silence. It's only now that it's become more visible that. That the people that you know have you know, they, they've dealt with this all you know for much of their lives, if not all their lives, you know, they're finally being able to you know to, to be themselves with less fear of retribution 
again, you know, for uh, for being targeted with you know with with harassment and violence because more people have stepped forward, more people have you know, come out as being different, and now uh, you know it. It's it it is empowering to the people that that were too scared before. I mean, hell, fifteen years ago, I would not have had the the courage to uh, to, to state. You know that I was trans I was transgender, and as a, a personal testimony to that, I did repress it for decades. You know, from the time I was a teenager, I was repressing it. I mean, I knew. I just didn't have the language for it back then because, you know, any time that that the topic came up, it was always met, you know, especially by my family, by my parents, by anyone that's at my school or, you know, just in the public in general. It was always met with disgust, with, you know, with slurs. So I learned very quickly to, uh, to, to stay, stay closeted and, and not, not reveal my truth. I mean, I, I will go into detail on this later on, you know, at a later date. But, I mean, this video has gone, gone on long enough, so. But I, I just, I just wanted to, to touch on the whole thing where, where um, the, the, the politics are concerned. And, I mean, I'm, I'm scared not only for, you know, on behalf of the kids, that are, are being told that they can't be their authentic selves anymore. But eventually, this is going to bleed into the adults, you know, as well. You know, because enough is never enough with these with these kinds of people that are pushing this shit. You know, first you ban the kids, you know, the 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 minors. You know. The, you know, the 16, 17, 18, you know, 17 year olds that, you know, are, are, are finally getting, you know, the care that they need. And then all of a sudden being told, no, you can't because reasons, you know, even though you've been psychologically evaluated, you've been, you know, you've gone over everything with multiple doctors. Apparently that's not good enough, but they will pass their legislations. They'll do their bans for the under eighteen crowd first, and following that, they will start targeting the older people too. I mean, you you fucking heard of that that ass clown with Donald Trump with with his bullshit, you know, proclamation about banning everything outright, regardless of age. He said that that was going to be a day one act. When he's reelected, yeah, fuck you, guy. Yeah, rotten hell. So, anyway, um, I know I'm getting kind of, kind of, I'm getting kind of ranty and kind of cynical here, but I just, I want to talk a little bit was all, I think I rambled on for about a good, good half hour plus now. I got shut up, but if you stuck with me through all this, thanks. And I hope that you will uh, not hate me for having an opinion that does not seem all that popular. Honestly, I, I, I fear for my future. For my future and for everyone you know, who identifies differently than the cishet uh, crowd that, you know, that has control of everything. So, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm fearful, but I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Anyway, you all have yourselves a great day, and I will uh, I'll talk again later when I feel more, uh, <laughs> I don't know, at some point soon anyway. Have yourselves a great day. We'll talk later.